Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back with another 10 metal bands you haven't heard but should. This is sort of one of those when it rains it pours things because I've got uh, most of the stuff for the next video, some stuff for the video after that, so um, still waiting on some bits but it just sort of uh, happened to f come apart this way. So first up we've sort of got a um, something a bit different I guess in that it's not one band, it's kind of an amalgamation of bands but this is the... Um, compilation tape that Desiccated Productions put out, which are based in Denmark, but run by uh, Malik from, I hope I'm saying that right, from uh, Hyperdontia and so on. And what this is, is a kind of cassette documentation of the Turkish underground from, I think it was 1993 through uh, present day. And um, just going through this, we have, uh, let's see, 24 tracks of Turkish Death, grind, you know, old school, brutal, newer school stuff, um, which I think is a really cool idea. Um, maybe if you're an older headbanger and you uh, remember maybe tape trading with the Turkish bands back in the day, this could be a cool uh, piece to have to bring back some memories. Or if you're like me, maybe you're younger and less familiar with, I am think, um, off the top of my head, the Turkish bands I know would be like Hyperdontia, um, Burial Invocation, Septage, and um, my brain is not working today, apparently. Uh, engulfed, of course. But here we get bands such as uh, Death Room, Mausoleum, or Mausoleum, Obscurity, Flying Dirty Clouds, uh, I, sorry, these are really hard to uh, read. Um, Undermo Undermost, uh, Death Project, Cenotaph, Cytosphere. Actually, I think I spoke about them before. Uh, Nuclear Age, Decaying Purity. There's a whole bunch on here. I'm not going to sit and read every single one out. Um, I, I'm not sure if you can read these for yourself, but uh, this is definitely something really cool. It is called Rotten Hymns of Anatolian Wisdom. Yeah, 93 to 2020. I said it on there. And like I say, so it has all these underground bands from the early 90s, surprise, surprise, um, all the way through the present day. So you do get some stuff like Engulfed and uh, so on on here. It's just a really nice all-in-one kind of must-have if you either like Turkish death metal or are interested in Turkish death metal. A really cool little um, thing. So thanks to uh, my friend Malik for sending that over. It's a real kind of treasure trove of bands that I hadn't heard most of. Next up we have Pounder who play heavy metal, plain and simple, on a Shadow Kingdom record, which couldn't be a better fit, in my opinion. Um, this is really bright. Uh, this is their new album, Breaking the World. Uh, in my opinion, the strongest effort. The um, members of this band are also associated with other bands like uh, Exhumed, Gruesome, uh, Carcass, stuff like that. So um, some definite um, veritable death metal uh, masterminds in here. But... Um, these guys still have a really catchy old school heavy metal. You know your angel witches, your witch finds the new wave of British heavy metal with some speed metal thrown in there. A bit of um, stuff like Manila Road and Sirith Ungol creeping in. Just really killer stuff from Pounder. Absolutely smashed out of the park. And uh, Never Forever might be the catchiest song to come out so far this year. I think it's this year. Is it this year? What year are we in? I don't know. Um, that shit's gone out the window now. Next up, we have some grotesque, cosmic -y, weird death metal from Altered Dead with a heavy presence of doom. Now, I'm talking more in the vein of Cyanide and those kinds of bands with a sludgy, mid-tempo, gross feel to it. This is really cool stuff. Absolutely amazing album cover, too. Really enjoyed this one. And this is on a Memento Mori Records from, uh, I think, Spain. It's either Spain or Italy. I guarantee I've got it. I've said the wrong one, but I'm going to stick with Spain as my uh, main guess based on the fact that it's run by a guy called Raul. Um, Altered Dead is just some killer fucking death metal, down and dirty, swampy, good shit. Like, um, I got this with the uh, new Diffy Gus album, which I also strongly recommend, but they've been on the channel before, so I'm not going to witter on about them. Now, yesterday, um, I sort of switched around the order of this video a bit, um, just based on what had come and what had not. But um, I got the new Ruins of Beverus CD in a press package, and I was thinking, oh yeah, they dropped a new album. I, re I reviewed their uh, split with Al Murkfee from Iceland, and um, I really enjoy the Ruins of Beverus. Yet yeah, somehow their new effort had completely flown over my radar, and boy do I feel stupid for that. Um, I've written a review, admittedly a sort of hastily uh, post-release review, but um, if, if you've sort of uh, 
fallen behind on this one like I have. I'm not sure how I have, but um, Van Records unleashed this one. And it really sees the band exploring, of course, their Black and Doom uh, foothold, but into a more gothic territory. It, I mean, it's, it's sort of like if you took uh, the best parts about Bolzer, some really kind of eerie black metal from Iceland, you threw in some kind of bombastic -y, uh, German black metal and then you just gave it this whole gothic aesthetic. It's really is something special I think and um, in my opinion once again we have the strongest effort from a band thus far. The Ruins of Beverast with the full grimoires. Absolutely a standing album. It really did floor me and uh, next we have the complete opposite end of the heavy metal spectrum. I quite enjoy doing this. But um, I wasn't sure if this was a band to put into this video just on the merit that I think a substantial amount of people in the underground will know this band. However, I'm not sure how much of you guys have heard them. But they're going in because Japan's Metal Lucifer fucking rule. This is just British heavy metal and uh, old school heavy metal worship done by some maniacal Japanese fellows who, if, if you're familiar with the Japanese metal scene, much like the South Americans, they just go absolutely all out on it. I, I love the... Uh, attitude to heavy metal in South America and in Asia because there's none of that European conservatism or American conservatism not speaking politically I don't do politics but that kind of they don't give a shit how obnoxious and in your face they are and they just nail it this album is just like it's so damn metal it could almost be cringe but it's not it's just fucking killer um this is the Heavy Metal Malaysian Chainsaw album, which, if any of you people are as much of a nerd as me, in fact, hopefully more so, I'm assuming that this is a Malaysian reissue of Heavy Metal Chainsaw, because it sounds identical to my ear. But if I'm wrong, someone please correct me on that. Also featuring the Asphyx drummer and members of uh, Sabbath and Abigail, I believe. Um, as you can tell, I've done my research again. And now, another weird diversion. We have the new Revolting album from Sweden's... Uh, Death Metal Powerhouse, Rogi Johansson, um, once again delivering some great stuff this time. We got a nice mix of very HM2 heavy Swedish death metal. Presumably uh, some Gorguts inspiration going in there too, especially visually, which I think works great. I'm not sure if you can see, but you can uh, feel. It's embossed, I don't think is the right word, but the logo's raised. This feels kind of like sandy. It's very nice for someone who likes... Uh, effort in the packaging. So once again, Kunal at Transcending Obscurity has uh, really put pride into his artist's craft and delivered something that I'm very sure this band will be proud of. Uh, look at that. Oh, there's more. See, look at that. Um, but yeah, there's some kind of darker, drearier elements. There's a lot of melodic stuff going on. It's only about half an hour long and um, I think maybe they could have even added more on without falling... Uh, into the trap of just dragging it out for the hell of it. But, you know, they made the decision and they made a damn fine one. This is just killer, some of the better sweet F in uh, the last year or so, which uh, is not the last you'll hear me say that, actually. Next up, we have Death Storm. Uh, these are three, the next three tapes, actually, were sent to me by a subscriber and um, someone that he messaged me on Instagram. He basically was, uh, I think, clearing space because he needed more room for more music, which, uh, Sadly, space is finite for us collectors. Thankfully, he was kind enough to send me some tapes thinking I'd appreciate them, and the first of them is Deathstorm. So what do we get here? Some very old school thrash. I'm talking in the kind of Teutonic vein with some uh, early Slayer and stuff, of course. Um, thrash, speedy kind of. is is metal as fuck. It sounds great. And uh, Deathstorm release, released a more recent album, I think, this year or, uh, or last year, sorry, maybe the year before that I reviewed really good stuff on uh, Dying Victims. The set of this one was Rush of Power, but I think uh, Dying Victims or High Roller probably did this one. And um, yeah, if you like the kind of thrash that just goes straight back to the 80s, none of the shitty, tacky, kind of uh, glamorized thrash, just balls to the wall, heavy metal, done fast. Check out Death Chain, they rule. Next up is Cauldron, the second of these tapes. Um, now this is their covers album, which uh, I didn't actually realize till I got it. And then I was like, wait a minute, these are covers. Um, I'm great like that on Electric Assault Records. Now Cauldron are awesome. They throw things back to bands like Sirith Ongol, Brockus Helm, um, Manila Road, a couple I mentioned earlier. Apologies for repeating myself. But yeah, Cauldron really deliver that kind of 
standing on a kind of mountain fantasy kind of stuff. And these covers are great. They make them their own, which is awesome. But um, they also, uh, what's the word? Uh, definitely pay a fair homage to the bands like uh, Necropolis uh, by Manila Road, of course. Uh, Lay It On The Line, that's a great cover. Um, there's, I mean, a Brian Adams cover on here, which is interesting. Then we've got like a Streetwalker, Sacrifice, of course, uh, Making Noise and Drinking Beer by A Tyrant. It's a really interesting mishmash of covers that they've done over the years, but it works really well. It's quite a cohesive listen and a good introduction to A Cauldron, but B some maybe more obscure old heavy metal bands. And last of all, we have Hellborn, who's... Um, I'm going to decase just so you can see this really cool art and that didn't really go to plan either. Now Hellborn is a more kind of thrashy but still these guys are death metal I would definitely say on a Dawning Septic. Um, thinking maybe more like Vader, Possessed, um, some of the other Polish bands, my brain's gone a bit blank there but um, very old school, aggressive, bestial sounding death, really cool stuff, definitely worth a listen to. So uh, thank you my friend for sending those out. Um, I'm really bad at names, uh, but thank you. I'm, in fact, I'm just gonna uh, look myself. Uh, just let me fire up Instagram because I don't want to be a dick. But I'm so bad at names, I forget my own pretty regularly. Uh, let me see here. Excuse the delay. I was not preparing for shout outs, but it does only seem fair. And my. Instagram has too many messages, so thanks everyone who makes an effort to talk to me. I'm sure his name is Aya. Uh, Aya saw me on uh, Instagram. Um, sorry about that if I butchered that. And last of all, let's talk about Putreon from Sweden playing some nice Lovecraftian Cthulhu mythos themed death metal. This is great on um, Emancipation Productions. I forgot the name of that label. There's definitely some more doomy, dreary stuff going on here, but with plenty of very obvious Swedish death metal. You know, if you like bands such as, um, let me think, who's a who's a good Swedish death metal band? Like, uh, maybe Tribulation in their early days where it had that mix of goth and just straight up Stockholm death. That's the, sorry, I've just, I'm kind of... Um, Andreas Yasormi is his name. There we go. Sorry, I had to do that. Um, but yeah, Putreon have those kind of tribulation-y vibes mixed with a uh, more modern, but throwing back to 90s Swedish death. There's definitely, you know, dismember, entombed kind of grave. But some stuff that maybe reminds me of like a feral and um, entrails and bloodbath and stuff. The band's doing it now, throwing back to that. So yeah, really cool stuff from Putreon. And I think quite a unique album. It doesn't just sound like uh, another D Beats and HM2's album that maybe might uh, not appeal to some. I'm a big sucker for that sound myself. But um, there's definitely enough originality in there that sets it out from that specific sound while incorporating it, if that makes sense. And with that, there's 10 metal bands you haven't heard but should. Uh, apologies for the slight uh, Instagram-based technical difficulties on uh, the shout-out, but... Um, you know, much thanks to Andreas and thank you to any labels that have sent me stuff or the stuff that I, most of this I've bought myself uh, just because it's great. Check out the bands, check out the labels, support where you can and until next time, stay metal.